We have been tracking Bronny James since he was 10 years old. The world has been waiting for LeBron James Jr. to make it to the pros. And now, he has. And everyone is crying nepotism. The truth is, everyone is missing something huge with Bronny James. He is the type of prospect we have never seen before. Who do you want to play with? Bronny is number one on my f***ing list. With the 55th pick in the 2024 NBA Draft, the Los Angeles Lakers select Bronny James. Can he be a good NBA player? We'll get to that in a second. Because the storyline here is that LeBron James is about to play with his son. Something we really never thought would happen in NBA history. Just mathematically, it's tough. LeBron is about to play in his 22nd season of his career, tying the record for the most all-time with Vince Carter. Add in the fact that he came straight out of high school, something that can't happen anymore, and the fact that LeBron's playing at a level that we have never seen at this age, and we're pretty certain this is never going to happen again. MJ's kid played in college years after he retired, but LeBron gets the chance to live every athlete dad's dream. And the truth is, Bronny might end up making it as a pro. From his high school days, it was clear that Bronny is special. I mean, seriously, what do you expect when you have LeBron's blood pumping through your veins? Recruiters were looking at him since he was 10 years old, which LeBron said should have been a violation, and he's right. Let a kid be a kid. Hype is important for kids trying to get recruited to good college programs because it gets eyeballs on you. Now, eyes on LeBron James Jr. was never an issue. But hype means nothing if you can't back it up. And throughout high school, he did. A hyper athlete with elite defensive prowess, Bronny proved that he had his dad's court vision and hoops IQ with a nice jumper to go along with it. As a senior, he led his team to a 23-11 record, averaging 14.2 points per game, and he was invited to the McDonald's All-American Game and the Nike Hoop Summit. At the event, Bronny hit a record five three-pointers. So when you see he was rated a top prospect coming out of high school, it sort of makes sense. He signed to play with USC just a few miles away from the old man as a four-star recruit. But then, tragedy struck. Almost a year ago now, Bronny James suffered cardiac arrest. He was diagnosed with a congenial heart defect, which on top of threatening his life, threatened his hoops career. Five months later, he made his debut. It was a triumphant victory over terrifying health scare. But the truth is, he wasn't good. Bronny shot under 20% in his collegiate career on catch and shoot threes. He could only start six games, playing 19 minutes a game. His percentages were dreadful, 37% from the floor, 27% from deep, 68 from the line. If you're going to be an undersized guard, which he is at 6'1 and a half, you have to learn to shoot. Historically, a few guys have gotten away with it, like Rajon Rondo, but Bronny is not Rondo. He's strong and proved in high school that he can handle the rock, but when the game sped up in college, he couldn't keep pace. He failed to create space offensively, he couldn't finish in the paint, and teams could close out on his jumper with ease, leading to those poor, poor shooting numbers. It's fine, a lot of guys struggle early on in college and learn to find their pace as they go. So he'd stay another year, develop those skills, and head to the NBA when he was ready. Right? Wrong. Breaking news into first take, USC freshman guard Bronny James will enter the 2024 NBA draft while maintaining his college eligibility. Everyone knew what came next. The rumor was that LeBron would go where Bronny went. So in this terrible draft, why not take Bronny late first round, despite not being pro ready, and get his daddy on a two-year deal? LeBron's agent put a stop to that line of thinking. But there's a difference, Malik, between hoping that happens and making sure that happens. Mm -hmm. And I think what I'm hearing is there's an effort to make sure that happens, meaning whoever's picking between now and a certain number is being told, don't do it. If you're thinking about it, don't do it. The Ringer's Bill Simmons said that his Celtics should take Bronny at 30 and hold him hostage. Then they'd call the Lakers like, taken. We have your son. Give us four first rounders and D'Lo or send him to the G League. Couple problems with that. It's a little more complicated than that. You don't want to waste to pick one. 
And you don't want to get in a situation where you have a player that you're drafting not wanting to be there. And so, and this particular agency has some, a lot of other players. So it all factors into the equation. So that's how it happened. That's how LeBron James poised himself to be the first player to ever suit up with his son in NBA history, something that no one thought was possible. Should Bronny have stayed in college? Doesn't matter, he didn't. Will he make it as a pro? Technically, he already has. We'll talk about how well it'll go in a second. But the big question of the day, is this blatant nepotism wrong? Is it bad for the game? Now, it happens all the time. Don't talk to me about nepotism being something new. It's been here. Nobody said anything before, shut the now. Bronny James took the spot of another hardworking, talented college kid who probably deserved to be drafted before him. In a 60-player draft, there are dozens who don't fulfill their dream of being a pro athlete. But for everyone left out of that 55 pick, it just became that much harder. Bronny was picked not necessarily because of his own talents, but because of who his daddy is. But we'll ask you this, who deserves better to give his kid a hand than LeBron James? He is no less than the second best player of all time. He's been the face of the league since longer than Facebook's been around. Maybe Bronny didn't deserve to be drafted, but doesn't LeBron deserve to fulfill his dream of playing with his son? Not to get all field of dreams today, but it's going to be an insane moment when LeBron gets a lob from his kid. Remember that Ken Griffey moment? Sure, Ken Griffey Jr. was one of the, what, 20 best players ever? And Bronny is not? But that was a huge feel-good moment for the sports world. The Lakers should put up with it because it means they get to keep LeBron happy as he approaches retirement. It's the same reason the Bucks still keep the Nassus around. Fans should be fine with it because it's an awesome moment. And why do we watch sports if not to rally around awesome moments together? If you're going to swing on anybody in the draft, it's someone with LeBron's DNA. Now he's too small to be a great defensive player, his shot has been erratic since leaving high school, and his ball handling has suffered as the pace has increased. On an NBA squad, it's unlikely that he'll get the proper time to develop. Teams rarely practice all that much midseason, and the Lakers have other young talent to worry about, like Dalton Connect, who the Lakers drafted 17 and we literally haven't mentioned once since. Bronny will probably play in the G League most of the season and work on his craft. Remember when Gary Payton Jr. came up from the G League to the 2022 Warriors with renewed confidence and pacing? Remember how important he was to their title run? The Lakers probably don't have a shot at a title and Bronny probably won't be an all-star. Here's hoping it works out for the kid, but either way, it's gonna be a lot of fun. Do you think Bronny should have been drafted by the Lakers or should he have stayed another year or so? Do you hate the blatant nepotism? Let us know in the comments, then watch one of these videos next. Listen to the wrong opinion, useless NBA trivia, and garbage rankings for more NBA content.